Welcome to another episode of What I Learned from Bobby Emmett. In this episode, you will hear directly from Bobby Emmett. Directly, you will hear um, a recorded audio of him talking about the creation story. But one thing I want to tell you is that myth, mythology is is and was just a story form of how to pass on knowledge in a very simplistic way that would be unforgettable so and it's also how your mind actually learns holistically as opposed to being told um separate little pieces of information without meaning, which is what we're taught, how the school system teaches you. Nothing, they don't connect anything together. It's just random little idiotic pieces of math. Um, You know, you you can see that in math. You're you're just being taught some random, um, some random formula, concept, or category, but it's never applied to real life at all. And it's also made overly complicated because they break everything up into little parts and and they um, dissect numbers so that you're getting decimals and square roots and all this stuff when nothing in nature requires you to know that because nature is holistic and also the only real numbers are zero through nine so anything else ha past that is unnecessary completely totally unnecessary um so anyway that's a point i want to say and I also want to say that you have to realize and get it into your subconscious mind and normal thinking that the spiritual world, the world of the unseen, which is totally unexplained to you, is the real world. And you are just a mirror down here of a slower vibration. But the your true self is a light body. Now, I know people can rationalize and say, oh yeah, I understand that. But the problem is that people don't really live it. They don't apply it. They don't they don't filter their thinking through that knowledge. And people that um, go to church and believe in Jesus, they don't even believe in a spiritual world. You know? They only believe in a concrete physical person. And then they limit themselves only to this thing that was given to them and then one book so anyway i just want to say that you um what i wish for you is that you make this part of your natural thinking about yourself and the world because that's what you need to that's what's going to make a big shift in your mind you know you ha- you should be every day if you're conscious you would be thanking the ancestors just because you you're acknowledging them because they're not higher than you you're higher than them because you're the most re- you are the most recent incarnation of all of them just remember that card you are the most re- recent incarnation of all ancestors previously. 
you are on the earth plane and you're the only one that can harness their power, agree, agree with them, you know, agree that they exist and that you're connected to them. But then you have to decide this world is finished. The beast is finished. I'm ready to, um, I'm ready for our collective energies. And you have to, you should be saying it. You should be declaring it. When something irritates you, just, just declare something, okay? Just declare something. When somebody irritates you, you don't need to tell them face to face, but just later you declare whatever you want about that person. Whatever you need, you need something done. Just declare it. Just say, I need this done. Ancestors, I need this done. Or ancestors, thank you for taking care of that. Because they are the demons. But not in a negative way. And the letter M is a symbol for melanin. And it's the number 13. It's the 13th letter of the alphabet. So any word with M in it is talking about melanin. And any time you see on a horror movie or sci-fi where they have minions, gremlins, demons, trolls, any like little sub-entity that is supposed to be bad but working for the bigger entity those are your ancestors and they are there to help you they're waiting for you to wake up and and know that they're there because that is the balance of the universe like everything takes care of everything the problem is that like you are the wizard you are the wizard you are the witch which means wise one now Let's just say everybody was a wizard. Well, first of all, the beast is a wizard because he knows the science of the universe and he's using it and he's hiding it and he's giving you this fake devil and 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 he has produced movies as a as a actually a product by the government to keep people scared of silly things. Blood, well, they will associate blood with killing and murder, right? That's why murder and killing is always on TV. So you won't understand, hey, my blood is a cosmic connection to the universe. So they'll keep all of that stuff in the collective mind of the masses. You know, demons are bad, ghosts, goblins, ghouls, trolls, um, spirits are bad. Oh, there's... You know, you shouldn't be listening to something outside of your, um, you shouldn't listen to something outside of yourself, 666, all this really kindergarten nonsense stuff. A number is bad, an animal is bad, an owl is bad. There's some religions that believe in fucking owl is bad. Oh, there's omens. Remember anything with the letter M is talking about your melanin. Anything. Anything. So, all I'm trying to do is convince you and remind you to get connected on a daily basis, live in awareness of that, and know that you are not alone, <laughs> like Michael Jackson's song, right? You're, you're not alone. You always have that inner voice. You have the inner voice, which is yourself, but you have another inner voice of ancestors telling you things, but we're not listening. So, just start to listen. Okay, so now, um, now will be the recording directly from Bobby Hemet and only Bobby Hemet talking, and uh, he will be explaining the creation of the universe. And I made a audio about it. Uh, it's not, it's a little slow maybe, 
So I knew that I, you know, of course I said that I was going to upload Bobby Hemmett saying it directly. I wanted to add, I wanted to add pictures to this, but I don't have time or I'm not making time to do it. I just want to get this uploaded because I already uploaded something related to this. So this you're going to get it straight from Bobby Hemmett. The same things that I said. I do want to make a correction. Sometimes when I hear Bobby, I cannot hear completely what he's saying. But um, when I was talking before, uh, I was saying the wrong deity. It is Apet. Apet. Like a pet dog. It's Apet. Apet is the hippopotamus deity. And the last avatar of the mother of creation of the universe. The, la the, the, the oldest one. Because he will tell you there's others. Uh, of course, I can't remember it right now. But Noon is one of them. She's seen. But that's like in a completely different dispensation. You know, in a completely different dispensation, Noon became the uh, mother avatar. But uh, Apet the hippo is the most ancient one. And she's on, you know, she's on the zodiac, um, the zodiac wheel. So now we can listen to Bobby Hemet. And at the end, I put Le Dr. Laila Africa. He got a big old tomb built for him, and he lived 96 years, 
had 60 something children and lived 96 years. And not only lived 96 years, they got his body preserved to this day. So we understand the whole point is to show you a spiritual principle that illustrates a spiritual manifested thought that a real history, you see. And also, too, religions that come out of the other religion, they have to somehow level the other religion to get that group of people to believe in that religion. People say, well, if this religion is spiritual, I already got one of them, so I don't necessarily need this one. So there's a little bit of psychology that went on. Now, going back to this particular temple of Denver, in the temple of Denver, you have the zodiac of Denver, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just find the book. I'll find the book that has the zodiac of Denver in it, and we'll uh, uh, pass this around right quick. This is the picture, this first one here. And in that zodiac of gender, you have what you call the planar sphere. It's a round zodiac that was up in the top of gender that was blown down by the Greeks and taken to the Louvre in Paris. Well, this particular zodiac and that particular temple was built in the Ptolemy period, which was late in Egyptian history, but what had happened was they used to tear down temples and build other temples from the bricks. But there was a papyrus that was in the wall of that temple. And that papyrus gave them the inscriptions to put on the wall of the new temple. And that papyrus of uh, that plan was 90,000 years old, you see. And that's late in our history, what they don't tell us. It's 90,000 years old, so now we have one of the oldest existing pieces of time in history, older than, older than Egyptian history. Now, in that particular zodiac, you have all of the gods that represent all of the stars and all of the heavens. It represents all of the gods that you know in some way, fashion, and form. And in the middle of that temple, you have one particular god. You have one particular god that all of the gods come from. And I'll show you this. That particular God that all of the gods come from is this particular hippopotamus goddess. This hippopotamus goddess called Athet, a tie earth. Tie meaning land and earth meaning earth, or meaning mother, mother earth. Tie earth or Athet. Or uh, later representation as new. Remember those words because it's directed right to you because you are the children of new and the children of Athens. Now, and if you had by God himself, you got to be God. Now, this particular hippopotamus goddess represents a pregnant woman. It's pregnant because it has a big stomach. And also, hippopotamus come in and out of the water. So that's known as the primordial waters of noon. Now, she's having, and I'll get the picture for you, she's having a son in that particular calendar. She's giving birth to a son. Now, this particular son is known as a dog or a jackal. A dog or a jackal. So it would look like this. This is a jackal. A jackal just means dog in Egypt, a particular type of dog. And all. Uh, now she's having a son. Now this particular son that she's having, this dog and this jackal, this is 
real key. Will later on be the prototype of the God that you know. I don't care what God it is. It will be the same prototype, whether you believe in Allah, whether you believe in Jesus, whether you believe in Buddha, whether you believe in Christian, whether you believe in Osa or Heru, it's the same God form. That particular God that she's having is the God that you say God in heaven. Now it's a it's it's a doctor that was blown down by the Greek. All right, we gotta listen to that again for you. Well, this particular zodiac. And that particular temple was built in the Ptolemy period, which was late in Egyptian history. But what had happened was they used to tear down temples and build other temples from the bricks. But there was a papyrus that was in the wall of that temple. Hmm. And that papyrus gave them the inscriptions to put on the wall of the new temple. And that papyrus or that plan was 90,000 years old, you see. And that's late in our history, what they don't tell us. It's 90,000 years old. So now we have one of the oldest existing pieces of time in history, older than older than the Egyptian history. Now, in that particular zodiac, you have all of the gods. You know what, this guy, I want to mention that. It represents all of the stars and all of the hell. The file opens up correctly. It represents all of the gods that you know in some way, fashion, and form. And in the middle of that temple, you have one particular god. You have one particular god that all of the gods come from. And I'll show you this. That particular god that all of the gods come from is this particular hippopotamus goddess. This hippopotamus goddess called Athet or Tire Earth. Tire meaning land and earth meaning earth. Are meaning mother, mother earth, tired, or affect, or later representation as new. Remember those words because it's directed right to you because you are the children of Newt and the children of Athens. Now, and if you have it by God himself, you got to be God. Now, this particular hippopotamus guys represents. A pregnant woman is pregnant because it has a big stomach and also a hippopotamus come in and out of the water. So that's known as the primordial water. Man, I'm going to have to cancel this motherfucker. Now, she's having, and I'll get the picture for you, she's having a son in that particular more? calendar. She's giving birth to a son. Now this nice particular thing. son is known I mean, as a dog or a jackal. A dog or a jackal. So it would look like this. This is a jackal. A jackal just means dog in Egypt, a particular type of dog. And you know, now she's having a son. Now this particular son that she's having, this dog and this jackal, this is real key. will later on be the prototype of the God that you know. I don't care what God it is. It will be the same prototype, whether you believe in Allah, whether you believe in Jesus, whether you believe in Buddha, whether you believe in Christian, whether you believe in Osa or Heru. It's the same God form. That particular God that she's having it's the God that you say God in heaven. Now it's a, a it's, it's a dog. Why a dog? 
Well, number one, a dog. Remember now, first of all, the Egyptians housed everything in animals because people change, people's attitudes change. And also, as we can see, the people's colors change too. But animals stay the same. Nature stays the same if it doesn't become extinct, but it still stays the same, the same. Because even if it, one animal comes extinct, it still has another animal in the animal family that's just like it. So they would house the principles in nature. Now why dog? They say, why is dog God spelled backwards? And when danger comes, it barks and warns you. When certain weather changes come, it barks and warns you. Certain cycles come, it does certain things in nature and, and warns you. So the dog was the prototype of the God. Now that is the mythological point of that particular God. The astronomical point of that particular God is the star system Sirius which is in the star system of Canis Major. Isis is known from coming from the star system of Sirius, bringing wheat to the world. Now, this is how this goes. It's from the star system of Sirius, and it's called the Dog Star. It's a whole star system cluster. Isis is known as the soul of Sirius, or the Egyptian word would be S-E-P-T, Sept. That's the Greek, well that's the, the, the American word of, of the English word Sirius, and the Greek word is Sophis. But S-E-P-T, Sept, which means the soul of Isis, or the soul of Aset. Heru is connected, who is Horus is connected with Sirius. Osa is connected with Sirius. So now, what we have here is this particular dog is called the dog star. And that's the astronomical counterpart. Gets a little deeper than that. Let's go on to um, a certain area, a certain stage that we want to talk about dealing with us and number one let me, let me go into uh, a little more uh, religion in the babylonian text of the sumerian text that serious is known well in the egyptian text let's go to egypt in egyptian it's known as the the what you would say the human counterpart is known as the first God in historical proportion that we know of. No other God exists other than Amphis, who is the mother of this God, but the actual God is called F-U-T, Soot, which means black. There's no other God that exists that predates this, try to trace it back, because this is 90,000 years old. And this is the oldest representation because before then, black men and black women were the prototypes of God and they did not need history. It was all in the mind. We understand that now if we go to the real because you go there and you ask the start of the history. And if you, if you start a few hundred years, they get itself to this thing because they got to go back further than that before they even start talking. So they used to record the history in mind. But when we're talking about the first recording, the first recordings of history was Sut, S-U-T, which means the blue black god, which is the son of the goddess Apet, which means Earth, which means Earth, which is the, the microcosmic part, but the celestial part, it means the triple blackness of space. 
triple blackness of space, and it's called Newt, is another name for, for this particular God. Pay up real uh, close attention to this triple blackness of space, and this particular, um, you can start those down and start passing them out. And all you can go go and start them out and start passing them out and stuff. Uh, and all the week. Is the triple blackness of space. Now, truth rev later on becomes Set, which is the Egyptian devil of the, uh, of the adversaries of Osiris. He later becomes a mutated form. You get the heretic papyrus of the British Museum, translated by Ch Chester Bailey, translated by Alan H. G um, Alan H. Gardner, Chester Br Chester Bailey. Set, it later becomes a mutated form of a person and known as the prototypical devil, prototype of the devil. He later on becomes the word Shaitan in Samaria. You later on become Satan in Hebrew. But before it fell, it was called Sut, the blue black god, the first god in history where Ra had fashions himself after, where Ptah fashions himself after, where Osiris fashions himself after. See, after it fell, the other gods came and fashioned themselves. Now, what does this mean? Let's go, what does this mean about all these doggone gods? I thought we believed in the God one or the one God. So the Christians say, you get E. Wallace's book, Burgess' book, from Fetish to God in Ancient Egypt, 1935. He said, I wrote gods of the Egyptian two volume sets 15 years before and I thought it was a uh, what you would call a, a a religion that was a uh, I thought it was a, a, a polytheistic religion but I was wrong the whole time what I didn't understand That's was exactly. the religion when I would see these particular gods which was called Nether's it just meant the certain attributes of the one God, of the God one. Because God is many, but it's like the African would explain the attributes of the God. Later on, man became kind of dumb and ignorant, so they had to just say, God, we won't deal with all of that because you will not understand the concept. But the Africans were advanced enough to understand the concepts of all of those deities to mean one when you put them together like a piece of puzzle. So there was no such thing as a polytheist. They always uh, uh, worshipped the God form of the one God. Now, Shut later on becomes El Shadar or El Shadi, which means God Almighty. In Kip in Samaria, God Almighty of El Shadi later on becomes Jehovah in Jehovah in the Hebrew culture. Same suit, same series. So we locate heaven because. Guess who is on those planets is the real deal what we're talking about here. You see, becomes Jehovah. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, to, to give you the, the religions from an astronomical kind of part so it won't be no argument when you argue whether you be Muslim, Hebrew, Jew, or whatever, Christian, we're saying that all the gods are the God one or the, the one God. The same God. We just arguing over different cultural differences. Now, what about Islam? If Sirius is known as Jehovah, which is Hebrew, right? Let's go and see what Allah is. 
Let's go and see what our lot is. If we've already, now we all understand that Sirius is also the chief god of Egypt, or the, or the chief god of Kemet, because Isis is known as the soul of Sirius. You have the god Anubis is known as the as as the the dog star, or it's known as the the, the opener of the way of Sirius. You also have the god Tahuti, which is your your Hermes Black Magistus material comes from, which is the the papyrus rolls or the knowledge which would come would be I think it would be um I think it would be the revelations of John Divine and the Bible. So Hudi is also by way of series. Well, the whole thing is it, it, let's link this thing. Now we understand that the God of the Buddhas is series. Krishna being a blue black God in India, which in India you have the Hari Krishna, Hari 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 Krishna. The word Hari means serious. Krishna means Christ, or the blue black God Christ. Krishna, shit. All connected. Let's repeat that. Now, in the Quran, uh, later on, man becomes king, kind of dumb and ignorant, so they had to just say, God, we won't deal with all of that because you will not understand the concept. But the Africans were advanced enough to understand the concepts of all of those deities to mean one when you put them together like a piece of puzzle. So there was no such thing as a polytheism. They always uh, uh, worshipped the God one or the one God. Now, Sut later on becomes El Shada or El Shadi, which means God Almighty. In Kip in Samaria, God Almighty of El Shadi later on becomes Jehovah. In Jehovah, in the Hebrew culture, same suit, same series. So we locate heaven because. Guess who is on those planets? Is the real deal what we're talking about here? You see, becomes Jehovah. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, to, to give you the the religions from an astronomical kind of part, so it won't be no argument when you argue whether you be Muslim, Hebrew, Jew, or whatever Christian. We're saying that all the gods are the God one or the one God, the same God. We're just arguing over different cultural differences. Now, what about Islam? If Sirius is known as Jehovah, which is Hebrew, right? Let's go and see what our law is. Let's go and see what our law is. If we've already, now we all understand that Sirius is also the okay, chief god angel. of Egypt, or the, or the chief god of Kemet, because Isis is known as the soul of Sirius. You have the god Anubis is known as the, as, as the, the dog star, or as known as the, the, the opener of the way of Sirius. You also have the god Tahuti, which is your, your Hermes Black Magistus material comes from, which is the, the papyrus rolls or the knowledge which would come, would be, I think it would be, um, I think it would be the revelations of John Divine and the Bible. Tahuti is also by way of series. Well, the whole thing is, it, it, let's link this thing. Now, we understand that the god of the Buddhas is serious. Krishna being a blue black god in India, which in India you have the Hari Krishna, 
Harry, Harry, Harry Krishna. The word Harry means serious. Krishna means Christ or the blue black God Christ. All connected. Now, in the Quran is one of the one of the best preserved pieces in a religious document other than the Book of the Dead or the Book of Coming Forth by Day. One of the best preserved pieces is preserved in the Quran and it goes like this. And it's talking about um, it's talking about the actual making of the male and the female. And this is what it says. Number one, it says uh, that each man shall be judged on his own labor, and his labor shall be scrutinized, and that shall be judged required for them. For them. And all things shall return to God. This is the God that moves the weeping and the laughter and ordains life and death. This is the God that created both sexes, male and female, from one single drop of ejaculated semen and will create all things anew. He who bestows and enriches, he is the Lord of Sirius. Right in the Quran, in his black footnote, the dog stuff. So we have, this is, this is in the Quran under the chapter of the star. First it starts off with the, with the blue black angel Gabriel coming to give the Quran to Muhammad. And, it, and then it starts talking about where he comes from and this, what particular God. Beautiful work right in the Quran because Muhammad Used to because Muhammad's father used to worship Sirius because he was connected with the Kushite Arabs, which was nothing but the ancient Egyptian mystery system in Arabia when Arabia was all black. Muhammad got rid of all the other astronomical counterparts that he kept the chief star and put it in the Quran for those. Savage Arabs who could not understand the science, they just had one star in sight. And that particular star is Sirius. He did do that. And he forbid them from worshiping or, or, or even studying the other stuff because he understood that he didn't want to get them off of track. Because man had gone savage then. So now it's in there under the star which the star means the heaven of the astronomical counterpart. There's a part in here about the cow also because the cow is known as the cow or the celestial cow of heaven. And in that zodiac of Dender that I talk about, they got a picture of a star, of a cow with a star between the horns, and that means Sirius. So I wanted to put that out. I wanted to put that out. Um, to show you exactly what this, uh, uh, what's going on with that. Number one, this is a picture of the. Did I give them the, did I pass this out? Number one, the Hebrew, you have the Hebrew Kabbalah, the Hebrew square back. We know that this Kabbalah, this holy Kabbalah, came from Egypt, which the Kabbalistic writing. The writings that they put the Bible together so you can take the Bible the Bible together and find different Trace the picture. The, of your body. Yeah. the chakras, the pineal gland, the kundalini, and the whole nine yards. So your Bible is nothing but a blueprint document of something of an esoteric knowledge of the rising to God chick. Now, this is the, the, the Kabbalah. Also, we find the origins of that Hebrew Kabbalah on the Temple of Komo Ongo in Egypt or Kenan. Right here, we got the documented history and the evidence that the Kabbalah came out of Kenan. 
even though we understand, most people understood that you have Raw Nelson, Amen Ra, and you should be the actual deities of the Kabbalah, and the most white secret societies deal with the Egyptian Kabbalah. Now, what is this Kabbalah? Let me explain some things here. It's going to be hot as hell. But I need my damn. The Kabbalah, you have. We need, to, we need to break this, we need to break it into religion so you can get the reason why they're not telling you about this whole UFO thing is because it's to related to us. You have a breakdown of the universe and also a breakdown of the body. All this also represents the free spiritual centers of the body. Because we're nothing but the microcosm of the macrocosm. If I got a big bucket of water that represents God, and I take a cup and dip it in that big bucket of water, is not the contents in the cup the same as the contents in the bucket of water? It's the same. Well, that's all you are, the microcosm of the macrocosm. So when I'm alive, I'm going to say that the black man was God, we laughed at that. We're not talking about the creator, but we're talking about God, generator, operator, and destroyer. That's so Terry terms. Now, you have a breakdown of the body, then you have a breakdown of the universe. Right here, you have number 10 is the earth, which is called the dog, the material world, because this is a material world. Next, you would have Venus. Mercury, you would have the moon right here, you would have the sun right here, you would have Jupiter, you would have Mars, you would have Saturn, and you would have Saturn as a gateway to another dimension, and you would have the zodiac, which is explaining some part of the universe, and then you would have Keva. Keva means crown, and it is the sun behind the sun. Our sun is probably 20 times greater than the earth or more, which falls in insignificance to its father, the sun behind the sun, which is about 20 or 30 times greater than the sun. The sun reflects the light of this particular sun. The sun is serious. Kepha, which means the, the, the first light reflected in space from the great mother space, the celestial womb, the triple darkness of space that reflects light. That first light, greater or first in heaven than the other stars, is serious. Our sun's father, and it is the father to it is the true father of this particular universe, even though there might be parallel universes, or there are parallel universes. The true father of this particular universe is called the central sun, which is the sun of all the other solar systems, is serious. Real key. Because I'm alive and honest, so there's other life forms in the universe. But the black man being the most superior. We got the documented evidence from every God that you know that came down here in the ancient times was black. And they came from this particular region. Now you have this top triad. Now these, these three spheres is known as the archetypal world. Right in here you see a cross bar that says the star. So they're talking about all of these as a representation of Ceres. And it, and it says the star and all. And it has a, a binal, which is the mother, which means creative world, which means understanding. You have Shakta, which is the father. Archetype, which means wisdom, and you have crown, which means light. What they don't show on this particular one is there's another realm or another ring that's over that is called Ansor. Ansor sort of means the blackness, or it means nothing. Nothing, you have the absolute from nothing. From the nothing, you get the absolute. This is the Tahuti science. The triple blackness of space. Because now, this is the key behind this. Kepha is reflected into Malkar, the microcosm 
the macrocosm. This is the way you come into being. As above, so below is the Jehudi's principles Praise of the man. principles of the Ancient principles of the universe. As above, so below, as within, so without, as a under, so on top. That's the law of correspondence. You need to get the book, the Holy Cabalion, to give you these laws. You can get it on the black media communication. Now, to go on, when the Greeks invaded Kemet, they said, well, look, they, they got the high priest for nothing. They said, well, uh, we want you to tell us the history of Kemet or the history of Egypt. He said, well, we got 500 pharaohs in the dynasty, period. That's 3,000 years. We need the we have, to be um, exact. We have 800 pharaohs Boys faces in the pre dynasty. That's about uh, 5,000 years. So we're talking about roughly 8,000 to 10,000 years. They said, well, who used to rule before then? He said, oh, that's my whole bunch of gods you used to move. The faces need that's to be more exact, of gods. but you did trace it. What do you mean by that? You did trace it. He meant at one time on the planet, when it was nothing but black people, you don't have any need to argue about that. One time on the planet, black people had all of their spiritual centers in motion, they had to, this is the Holy Cabal, and you can get this also, you can get it at Black Media Communication. They had all of the spiritual centers hooked up. You had the, the, the seven chakras, which is represented as the seven seals in your body. You had the, the crown chakra, which is known as the, the Christ mind. That You had one brother that had the Christ mind by going to the schools in Egypt and went went in and told him that he was God, just like all black people were God. He just told him he was, and then people say, oh yeah, he's the son of God. Yeah, he was the son of God. He didn't lie. But what you didn't know is, you can become that same person, you see, by raising the spiritual son. At one time on the planet, we all was that way. We all was going to the level we were all working on the level of God. What happened was we got trapped in this third dimension. Our origin was the star system series. Real key, because this is this is this is the saving grace of what's getting ready to go on with this white boy. He's under attack. He get ready to get in behind, whipped up by the gods of the universe. It's going to put him in hell. So we came from the star system of Sirius. We can have a debate on this. Anybody want to debate it? Because we know where the Egyptian, but the, 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 uh, the Christian, Christian religion came from. I showed you what the dog on Quran said. So now, the we were first seated from the star system series. All we had to do was to keep up with time to know when the brother got on the planet up to the point where the brother was. But somehow we lost track of time and time by losing track of time in a third dimension of density. This is the third dimension. We have different dimensions. You go on the fourth dimension, you will disappear. Going, That's man. the spirit world. And if you go on the third dimension, you will see everybody that died and that they haven't gone on to another level. The way things are going right now, they stuck somewhere on the lower level of the stuff, right? Now, they forgot time, and time caught up with them, and when time caught up with them, they were known as the fallen people. When Egypt came into being, the black man 
had already lived for millions of years, but he was on his downfall. The reason why Kimmy existed was to record the record to teach man how to elevate himself to the level of God. Check. That's where you have your mystery school. And to record this, and if they didn't do it, we would have even more trouble from this thief because he wouldn't have learned no kind of education at all. But he did learn stuff that was stolen from the mystery schools by the priests. And then later on, after they went into a dark age, later on given back to them by the Moors in Spain. But then. cells here, these little bubbles here, these represent your brain cells. This is a photograph inside of your brain. And these bubbles here are brain tissue. And this in this area is a liquid filled space that we call the third ventricle of your brain. This item floating right here is what you call your third eye. That is your anatomical third eye that's in your body. Right now. Every time a planet moves, something moves inside of that galaxy, it's but it's not a galaxy. It's something larger than that. And you have the largest one in your brain than any race. It also uh, causes you to be connected to outer space. It becomes inner space with African people. Now, I'm talking about an area called your third ventricle, where a gland resides that we call the pineal gland. That's the gland I was referring to that uh, makes this color, this pigment called uh, melanin, which makes your skin brown. It's made in, by this gland here, primarily by this gland called the pineal gland. And this gland triggers responses in all the other glands. It keeps your body in rhythmicity, keeps everything in clockwork in order. Anything that affects this gland will affect all the glands in your body. Anything that alters the ability of your glands to work a cough suppressant that suppresses secretions of your gland. Antipresperance that suppress the secretion of your glands. Anything that suppresses the secretions of your glands stops the ability of the pineal gland to function.